Well, 12 months ago, I wouldn't have been that worried about losing Zach Viner that I'd make a whole video about it. But he's grown so much over the past 12 months that I've actually convinced myself to make a video on the attention he's actually getting from other clubs. Well, Zach Viner has been attracting interest from other clubs in the Championship and reportedly in Scotland as well, but that's been pretty quickly diminished. For some context, today is the 16th of August, and as you, some of you may know uh, if you follow me on Twitter, well, it is my birthday, so I am doing this on my birthday, because quite frankly, I have nothing better to do. Uh, so, no, no offence if you're watching this, but yeah, I've, I'm providing you with content, so you're watching this, absolutely thank you very much. But... We're here to talk about Zach Viner. He has been such a crucial part of our team and our back line over the past 12 months. And his just growth and kind of resurgence back into the squad has been absolutely unbelievable. And he's grown to be probably one of our top assets remaining at the football club. I don't think we'd be having this conversation this summer. But the problem is Zach Viner's contract runs out in 2024 so that's next summer so City are kind of in a position now whether they have to nail a contract extension down for a couple more seasons or they have to sell but selling Zach Viner right now would be such a massive loss to Bristol City because I don't think many of us saw saw it coming and because of the fact they'll probably be available for a cut price deal as well because of the contract situation I think a lot more clubs, top end championship, maybe even lower end Premier League, would be interested in Zach. Well, just for some context, Zach Viner, in the season where he finished 17th, and it was the first full season for Nigel Pearson at Bristol City, Zach Viner didn't play many games. He was kind of fourth, third, fourth choice uh, centre back option, and he just never looked like having a consistent run of games, always looked a liability was constantly caught out for pace. His defensive awareness and his positioning was absolutely horrendous and it fell down the pecking order. It was not probably highly rated by Nigel Pearson. And it looked for all sets and purposes he was surplus to requirements in Bristol City and maybe he was one of the players that was going to be moved on. Even Zach Vines admitted himself that that summer after when we finished 17th, it looked looked for all sets and purposes he was set to leave the football club. Well, obviously he didn't leave the football club and actually he started a few pre-season games that year and looked really, really solid and it looked like he'd worked really hard over the off time and he looked a much better player. And so evidently it was enough for Nigel Pearson to convince, to change his mind and he actually started in the first game away at Hull where he didn't make any make any mistakes, he didn't do anything wrong. We were relatively solid, it was just a penalty which was conceded by Naismith and a long-range bit of quality from John Kelseri which won hold the game. But Zach Viner looked pretty solid and ever since then he hasn't really looked back. He's been a very solid centre-back, he's taken the captaincy and he's looked fine with it, he hasn't had any added pressure of sorts which can, you know, affect some players but generally he's looked a really, really solid player. The most impressive thing about Zach is that he's been such a consistent part of our defence. We've switched from a 3 to a 4 to a 3, who's been incredibly inconsistent. We look like we finally settled at a back 4 and it looks like it's working. Right backs have constantly changed. It's been Kane Wilson at times, it's been uh, Mark Sykes, it's been George Tanner most of the time there. But his centre-back partnership has always been different. It's been Rob Atkinson, it's been Tim Closer, it's been Thomas Callas, it's been Cam Pring, it's been George Tanner at times. Even Zach Viner himself has been moved from left centre-back to the right centre-back. He's always been part of that defence. And I think that's massively helped Zach in his own development in terms of gaining leadership, in terms of organising himself, but not only that, organising the whole defence because, because of the amount of changes... A lot of that because of injuries and suspensions and whatnot. We've had to have at least one player in there who's acted like the leader. And that's pretty much always been Zach Viner. That leadership qualities I've just talked about, that wasn't there a couple of seasons ago. It looked like he was 
not an organised mess, really. He never really got himself into position, never really looked like a championship-level defender. But he's not only been a consistently solid championship defender, in my opinion, over the last 12 months, he's probably getting into any top-end championship side. So for me, and for probably all Bristol City fans, the interest from uh, higher up in the food chain is absolutely no surprise. Well, the teams talked about are Southampton from the championship, and well, they're just newly relegated, so they will probably have enough money to buy Zach Viner for whatever fee we ask for. Luton have just been promoted to the Premier League, and I'm not surprised by that either. Any other Premier League side, I don't think he goes, but because... Well, Luton's transfer strategy has mainly been this window, you know, championship, high-end championship players, Ryan Giles, Thomas Kaminsky, you know, people who would probably just about be fine in the Premier League. I'm not surprised by this interest either. It was also talked about that Rangers from Scotland were interested, but Michael Beale's come out in their local media and diminished those rumours pretty quickly. Well, for Southampton, it's, it's an interesting one because Ross Martin is known for his high possession, maybe slow tempo sometimes, but generally pretty dominant football that, in my opinion, will get more results than it did at Swansea and MK Dodge just because it's higher quality and calibre of players. Bednarek and Stevens were the backed, well, two centre-backs that started away at Sheffield Wednesday uh, on opening day. They've got Lianco, but he was reportedly close to a move to Besiktas before that broke down. And they also have uh, Armel Belakotcha, but he's been linked with quite a lot of moves away t around Europe so maybe if Belkotchap or Lianco go I could see Zach Viner slotting in there maybe being a second fiddle but I'm not sure he wants that well Luton they I've just talked about their kind of transfer strategy and I'm not really surprised about the fact that they're looking for another top end championship player in my opinion they've signed Mads Anderson they've got Tom Lockyer there they've got Reese Burke they've got some good good Players, would Zach Viner get in ahead of who I've just mentioned? Tom Lockyer, I don't think so. Mads Anderson, I don't think so. He's just been, he's just a new signing. Reese Burke, Dan Potts, maybe. Amari Bell started a left centre back for them away at Brighton. So maybe he, maybe Zach Viner gets in ahead of Amari Bell because he is a left wing back by trade, really. So maybe he gets an opportunity to play one season in the Premier League if he impresses in a relatively weak gluten side, we're all kind of anticipating that, then maybe he gets another move to a pro, you know, established Premier League side. Well, me being completely biased, of course, I want him to stay. I want him to sign that contract extension and I want him to make sure he gives us another full season of just general solidity as centre-back because over the past few years we've had a bit of injuries and just general uncertainty and we may look at bringing it bring another centre-back in. By the time it's September the 1st, we may have another centre-back in through the door. We never know. You you never know. If Zach Viner's out of here, then we may have to bring in a few centre-backs, to say the least. So, if Zach goes, absolutely, you know, brilliant last 12 months. And, to be honest, if we get anywhere in the region of four or five million for him, that's absolutely brilliant business with the one year, one year left on his deal. It's, um, it'll be a massive loss, but not irreplaceable. I think we can get some uh, players in through the door, who are more than capable of being solid, solid championship centre-backs. We've signed in recent years Rob Atkinson and Rob Dickey so far, who have looked more than capable of fitting into our system and have generally been quite good. I know Rob Dickey's only been here a couple of games, but still, he looks pretty good. Uh, so, yes, in my opinion, I think he should stay. If he gives us another full season, he'll likely be in the Premier League next year. If he has another full season where he was like last season and just keeps improving... There's, in my opinion, no doubt there will be significant more interest from possibly mid-table Premier League sides. So yes, what are your thoughts on the Zach Viner situation? Interest reportedly from Southampton and from Luton. His contract expires next summer. What would you do with him? We know that Pearson does not want players here who are not committed to the cause. Is Zach Viner committed to the cause? You let me know. Uh, I'd say he is with the turnaround he's, he's had over the past 12 months. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on the situation. Would you sell him? How much are you looking to get for him? And in my opinion, if you'd asked me probably 12, 12, 18 months ago, we'd be looking in the future that we'll be looking at around four or five million for Zach Viner. I'd be laughing, but that feels a bit cheap now.
But yes, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Hit like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Age Robin's Dork YouTube channel. And be grateful, because I've just given up 30 minutes of my birthday for this. Uh, but yes, thank you guys very much in advance for the birthday wishes. Well, hopefully some of them there, if you're not too mean.